Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. Today we're going to be playing with a Madness deck. Um, the deck list comes from Jesse M, but there's an aster asterisk there. So Jesse M sent me this deck list, but there were originally four copies of Burning Inquiry. And I said to Jesse, hey, what do you think about testing Bomat Courier in this video? And Jesse was on board with it. So this is an idea that I got from the Madness Discord sure, the, the Madness Discord server. Shout outs to, to them. And in case you're not familiar with Bomat Courier, it's a 1-1 with haste. When it attacks, exile the top card of your library face down. And you can pay a red, discard your hand, sacrifice Bomat Courier, and put the exiled cards into their owner's hands. So the idea is that this is another way to junk your entire hand, which is, is sometimes upside with something like Lion's Eye Diamond, and you can use it to dump a whole bunch of creatures into play, but it's also a way to refuel, and it's another good turn one play, because you don't always necessarily want to cast something like a Faithless Looting on turn one. Um, so I'm pretty excited to see this card in action. Um, otherwise, this looks pretty similar to lists that I've played in the past. Now, this version is picking up a pair of Pithing Needle in the sideboard. I'm unsure how I feel about this. So a lot of times with a sideboard card, I ask, what is this here to fight? And with Pithing Needle, the answer is often, at least for Legacy, that this is a, a catch-all. It kind of stops everything. But Madness isn't trying to stop things. Madness is trying to turn some lizards and some plants sideways and, and get people dead. So I'm unsure how I feel about Pithing Needle. I can understand wanting it to maybe, say, shut off an Urza Saga or something like that. But ultimately, I'm unsure whether or not this is just going to be better than, say, another copy of Ancient Grudge and a second copy of Flaring Pain. Um, we'll kind of see how it feels. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Let's go ahead and jump into some matches here. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content five days a week. If you're a regular follower, please throw me a like. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. And what's that? Honey, it's time for your weekly Lizards match. Yes, dear. <laughs> Let's do it. Video description has the, the deck list if you want to try that out as well. So this hand is absolutely going to be a keep. I am going to have to figure out how I want to play it. I am going to have options. All right, uh, so most likely thing is maybe 60 card death and taxes here. <clears throat> Draw Vengevine. Not a Vengevine. I can play Bomat Courier, LED, Crack LED, Anji's Ravager, or I could Faithless Looting and try to hit some Vengevines. I should probably just play the Bomat Courier. All right, land. Bomat Courier, LED, Crack for Red, put those on the stack, cast a Lizard, cast an Anji's Ravager, go to combat, bash in for one with Bomat Courier. Um, that's, a, that's a fair amount of card advantage. Pretty, pretty good turn one. Ooh, we might be playing against Painter then? Oh, no, uh, red, white, death, and taxes. This is not castable off the taiga. Um, that is what it is. Really like a second land. I don't think I want to attack with Bomat Courier this turn. Just going with the Anji's Ravager then. That's obligatory. All right, now that I have a second land, I can always, uh, like, pump Basking Ruala, and this becomes a creature that can viably attack now. I don't... I think I want to fetch with this to play around to like an Avon Mind Sensor. But I might want to fetch with that so that I can leave some mana open for a Bomat Courier. That's something that I realistically might want to do. All right, you've got more lands. Oh, this is not the direction I was expecting that to go. So this is just straight up a red white stompy deck of some kind. Oh. I thought that Thalia was going to stay back. I am wrong. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll just take that damage. I don't think I'm going to crack the Bomat Courier here. So I'm going to go to 16 after everything's said and done. All right, do I want to cast this Faithless Looting? 
I honestly might have better uses of my mana in other ways. Because it, it's two mana to cast this Faithless Looting. I think I'm just going to let it go. The big question is, like, am I attacking with Basking Root Wall now, or is this defensive? I think I'm, I think I'm going to crash in with both. I'm not sure if that's correct. Ooh, a hollow one. Okay, so that's no blockers. How many cards did I discard there? Is it just... I think it was just this. I don't remember if I discarded Wooded Foothills. Shoot. Uh, that's very important. No, I just discarded Face Looting. Um, so this currently costs three. I could just cast that. I should probably just cast that. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So let's fetch. I'll get the other Taiga here. And cast the hollow one. And I've got a pretty good setup here. My Bomat Courier also has some text now. I can use that to discard the Vengevine, potentially. I don't know exactly what my opponent is going to have. Oh. This makes sense now. Huh. All right. Okay. Here we go. Oh, geez. So my opponent is potentially going to floop a whole bunch of stuff into play here. Uh, be pretty annoying. Okay. Unexpected. Huh. 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 Uh, yeah, so that was cool. Oh, and shit, and these are attacking too? And indestructible. Fuck! Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, Hollow One can kill something like this. I might... I might cash in Bomat Courier for some life. I don't know how I'm going to deal the remaining points of damage easily. I'm going to cash in Bomat Courier for some life. Let's crack the Bomat Courier. I'll get a new LED. And there's a Vengevine in the graveyard. But my opponent has this Batter Skull, uh, which is horrifying. I think I'm dead. Like, I can, I can gamble for a card... I'm I'm at five. My opponent soaks up at least four points of, of yeah. I'm I'm done. That was brutal. Okay, now I know what I'm playing against. Uh, yeah, let's uh get some removal in here. I don't know if I want an ancient grudge for that batter skull or not. It I don't know how many actual targets it's going to have. Um, go gambles out. Bomat Couriers are probably not great here because my opponent has a bunch of, like, first strikers and, like, two toughness creatures that are going to wall this. I think something like this looks okay. Bone Shards and Firestorm will do some of the lifting or letting me get through opposing blockers. Um, but opponent's deck is sick. Uh, my hand really does nothing. Let's mulligan this and look for something more objectively powerful. This hand also does nothing. Like, I cycle a hollow one on turn two and play a turn three Anji's Ravager. I don't think this is good enough. I'd rather go to five and try to do something broken. We we did something broken last game, to be fair, but my opponent did something more broken. So let's mulligan again. Uh, This is not currently broken, but it has the potential to be broken. I'm 100% throwing back one Faithless Looting, and then I'm not sure. I think I keep the Once Upon a Time and throw back a Mountain. And try to assemble maybe a turn two Venge Vines coming in. Let's cast this once upon a time. Yes, I think I pick up second Venge Vine here. And discard both. And then try to have a really big, impressive turn. I'll pick up Taiga, I think. All right. Uh, these are not the cards I was hoping to see. These are not currently castable. I also don't have another land. I may I may flub around and die, especially if my opponent has any sort of mana acceleration towards like getting to their Winotas. I'm not sure if they're like a Chrome Mox deck or a Chalice deck or or what. I I didn't see too much of their deck. They they flooped a bunch of creatures into play and I died. 
I, I don't know what their interaction angle is, if any. All right. Oh, yeah, okay. Chrome Mox confirmed. That's an Archon. Ah, oh, no. I am super Omega boned. Um, now, rest in peace is usually only medium against a deck like this one, but I, I was on a mold of five and like kind of all in on a double Vengevine start. So that was that was no good for me. Yikes. Now my non basics enter tapped. I don't get more than one spell a turn. It is, it is just bad news. Ugh. Yeah, like now I don't get to play the Andes Ravager this turn. It's it's gross. I will pump my lizard and hit for three. The lizard plus my opponent's ancient tomb might do a lot, but I expect that they can do something to gum up the board and make it so that I can't favorably attack in anymore. All right, all right. I I am done. GGS. I'm gonna ask my opponent for their deck list though, because this is sweet. Okay, so I play Putrid Imp. I discard Ruwala Mountain Bloodstain Mire. Play Double Hollow One on turn one. That's that's a keeper. And I did get my opponent's deck list from last round, by the way. They were, they were quite friendly and helpful. Good luck to you as well. Uh, so I will, I will probably play that as tomorrow's video. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited about it. Discard the Root Walla. Pass to the Root Walla. This is definitely one of those like greatness at any cost sort of scenarios where like I throw away a good amount of stuff in order to have an explosive turn one. Uh, and this is a, this is an absurd turn one. Yeah. <laughs> I indeed had the good luck. That was vintage. Like that was that was 10 power turn one. So so no sideboard? Probably no sideboard. My opponent tends to play like four color loam and four color loam adjacent decks. I could like hedge and play some bone shards or something. Um, hmm. Like hedge against things like Knight of the Reliquary. I think I'm not. Gonna, I think I'm not going to sideboard just for like an unknown game too. I'd only be sideboarding two or three cards. Um, I don't. I don't think I want to mess around with it. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Have muted this. Oh baby, oh baby. <laughs> oh god, I feel dirty looking at this hand. Can you see it, YouTube? Can you see this fucking masterpiece? Once upon a time, like maybe find another Vengevine. Badlands, LED, crack LED. Cast, uh, cast Ravager and Rootwalla. Return Vengevine. Anji's Ravager has haste, like, oh my god. I, I will keep this hand. Okay. So, my opponent might be on a, like, blue-white control deck of some nature, perhaps. Maybe Bant. Oh my god. Faithless Looting improves this even more. Alright, so let's cast the Once Upon a Time. Another Vent, fine! Oh my god. I will take it. I think I do. I think I cast the Faithless Looting as the bait spell here, because the Faithless Looting is unnecessary for this hand. Here we go. Okay. Bait, bait successful. Yeah, there's a Shark Typhoon. Now I cast this LED. Now if this LED does... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ozymandias, for what I am about to do. I cast Anji's Ravager. I cast Basting Rootwalla. I will return two Vengevines. Yeah. I am... I am the bad guy today. Okay, um... This hand is medium, but could be improved by a lot of draws. It can already produce a hollow one on turn two, which is okay. And it has a Faithless Looting as well. I think I keep this one. It's borderline. All right, my opponent has kept on six. All right. Oh, no. I don't think I am going to be fast enough for whatever this is with this hand. I could just poop a hollow one into play on turn... Yeah, okay, never mind. This hand's fucking great. 
<laughs> oh, oh man. All right. So there's Putrid Amp. Discard one card. Discard two cards. Discard three cards. Cast a hollow one. Bash in for five on turn one. Eat your fucking heart out, Delver. You have been replaced. Opponent's down to 15. All right. So we could be facing down a Storm deck. We could be facing down a Show and Tell deck that happened to just draw double petals. Uh, we could be facing down a Doomsday deck. We're, we're somewhere on the combo spectrum. Oh, JK, I am a liar. Uh, we are probably playing against uh, some sort of like Urza artifact deck. With like Emery's and shit. All right, so there's four mana. I presume this is going to be an Urza. Oh, uh, okay. So we are probably actually playing against an Oracle combo deck now. Uh, I guess I start the turn by casting this Faithless Looting. We'll see where this gets me. I think this is a time where I do just cast the Basking Rootwalla rather than try to hold it. All right, so I'll cast that Lizard. I have five cards in Graveyard. This will be six cards in Graveyard. Uh, I'll pick up a green source here. And now I have to ask myself, do I want to discard this once upon a time in order to get one more point of damage in this turn? Because this gets uh, plus one, plus one with Threshold. I think the answer is yes. Like, I have, I have a lot of power in play. I just want to close the game. Or rather, attempt to close the game might be more accurate because my opponent can... Exile the top cards of the library to prevent the damage that would be dealt. I will get to see a lot of the things that are in their library. That's the good news. Yeah, okay, so this is a paradigm shift, like Thassa's Oracle sort of deck. Okay, so my opponent has stopped exiling cards. I believe they only exiled six, though, so they're still taking one. Um, notably, I suppose my opponent could have used Tormod's to get rid of my anger and keep my basking rootwalla from attacking so just throwing that out there okay yeah okay they they did that now but they should have done that sooner so the thought Lush has a cumulative upkeep of exiling some cards from the top of their library um yep i'll send in there for some damage and again it's really more of an attempt at preventing the damage than anything else um, notably, this is a point where having the second flaring pane in the sideboard would be really good. And now my opponent's going to activate Thought Lash a bunch of times. Oh, I, my opponent did not activate Thought Lash, uh, which is strange to me. That may... I, hmm. Hmm. Don't, I don't quite understand. Do you just have the win right now? Okay, you, you do just have the win right now. Um, I am going to let them do this, mostly because I want to see if there's anything strange I need to play around. Like the main deck gut shots in addition to main deck Tormod scripts. And relics. Tormod scripts. Hmm. Okay, Jace Wielder of Mysteries is also in this deck as an additional way to combo off. That's really good information. Um, so it looks like there's a couple of Pact of Negations, and there are Force of Wills. There are not Force of Negations. Yeah, there are not Force of Negations. Okay, and now my opponent wins the game. Thoughtlash did some serious heavy, lifty, heavy lifting against me. I really wish I had another, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a uh, Flaring Pain. Uh, I guess I can... A thing needle thought lash. Um, let me just pull up the text of that to confirm. Yeah, that's an activated ability with zero CMC. Okay, yeah, I can, I can pithing thing needle that. That'll probably be the only thing that I do. Like, I don't want to try a fight against the creature or anything. Oh, I will bring in the flaring pain, of course. Uh, so I'll probably go gambles out and then uh, maybe trim a once upon a time. And that'll probably make things look pretty good. Uh, yeah, uh, this hand is... <laughs> this hand's okay. We can, I, I guess, keep this hand. Now, notably, if the LED does get countered, this hand is a little weaker than I might like, but that's okay. It will still be good. Uh, this will be a Taiga here. I think I go ahead and cast the LED first. A Bomat Courier is not going to eat a Force of Will. 
Oh, wow. All right, so this is my first creature for the turn. All right, now I'll crack my LED. Yandi's Ravager will be my second creature for the turn. So I'll cast this. There's my Vengevine. Yes. Now I get a Lizard to boot. Casual 4, 7, 8, 9, almost 11 power on turn 1. Kind of depending on uh, whether or not I draw a land. Uh, yeah, just uh, just all around disgusting. That That is attacking for 5 on turn 1 with 4 other power. Maybe 6 other power that couldn't attack turn 1. This Madness deck is scary. I love it. You wanna like play a Tormod script or something? <laughs> the deck the deck's pretty hard to hate on. Yep, a relic of Progenitus. Fine, fine card. We wee bit late. Okay, I, I will just discard this card. This this card means nothing to me. Send him. So I get to throw another card under the Bomac Courier. And then do an ancestral. Nice. Alright, so that puts my opponent to 5, so I have Theoretical Lethal next turn. Do I want to crack the Bomat Courier? I can make a land drop and potentially also produce Venge Vines if I do. I don't, I don't think I will. If I, you know, my opponent played some sort of Hieroclasm-esque card that wiped the board, I would, I would do it, but otherwise, probably not. Yeah. That's to be expected after that start that I just had. On the draw, I might want to keep the gambles in my deck because gambling for flaring pain is a way to help break through Thoughtlash. I think I'm going to do that. Do I keep gambles? Do I need pithing needles? I think I'll keep the pithing needles. I need to cut two other cards then. I could cut, the, I could cut once upon a time. I think, I think I like anger. I just want to kill my opponent before they get a Thoughtlash into play most of the time. But, like, that card is dangerous enough that I do need to keep interaction for it. Yeah, I'll, I'll trim Once Upon a Times. Once Upon a Time, Anger and Gamble are the things that I tend to gravitate towards cutting, and I think Ox is reasonable as well. Uh, this hand doesn't do anything. It has a lot of lizards, but unless I find specifically Putrid Imp off Once Upon a Time, I don't think this hand is good enough. This is a hand where if I gamble for an LED and hit it, I will I will go wild on turn one. I think this is a keep. And I think once upon a time goes back. I think I think once upon a time goes back. Alright. Island relic, sure. That relic is not gonna do anything. I'm gonna have a bloodstained mire in the graveyard. I think I want Taiga, because it pumps both root wallas. Now, if I discard exactly the LED, things get a little bad. Ooh. Yeah, yeah my, my hand is not great now that that gamble didn't resolve. My opponent can pick away at my graveyard. Yeah. The counterspell plus the relic might be enough to stop me. Like, I, I need help from the top of the deck here. Land is not that. Okay, you may you may pull the other gamble out of my deck. I accept this. I don't really think that's a great play. Because gamble is a three of, even in the most gamble dense versions of the deck, and like this is not a card that is traditionally played as a four of and frequently not even as a three of. I I don't think I like that play. Alright. So let's get a Badlands here, and we we will just cast a lizard. It's fine. If I hit a land drop next turn, my hand's actually still pretty good. My opponent also may have kept a hate dense hand that doesn't actually have a way to combo off. That's kind of my hope right now. Like Blazing Root Wallet can do a pretty good Delver impression. All right, that is no shuffle with the Ponder. Okay, that's that's the land I wanted. Let's send in with my Lizard. It's just going to be for a single point of damage since I'm playing Anji's Ravager this turn. And then for my other land here, I would like Taiga. I don't think I'm going to play around to back to basics. I think I'd rather have green green for 
um, hard casting a Venge Vine if need be. Okay, it's it's in play. My opponent's deck is not really mana efficient at like actually ending the game. It takes at least four mana to end the game. A lot of times six mana, so I might be able to get myself out of this. I also may force my opponent to crack their relic in this next turn cycle. Okay. I believe I will cast this Blazing Rootwalla in an attempt to return a Vengevine in my second main phase. Oh wait, I, did, I didn't have to do this with mana. I was so concerned about using the card that I did a dumb. We'll see if that comes back to bite me. Alright. I've discarded three cards, so I do have the mana to go ahead and just uh, dome my opponent for an extra two. Unless Days gets involved, I don't think I'm going to get punished for my just stupid little mistake here. All right, cast Hollow One. This should cause my opponent to crack the Relic. Okay, yep, looks like we are getting movement. I will be throwing lethal damage at my opponent next turn, assuming this resolves. I'll have 4, 7, and 13, 14 damage. Well, I'll, I'll still have this land, so it'll actually be more. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're definitely ready to murder. Okay, goodbye, Vengevine. I'll use the ability. Alright, and then I'll play my land and play out the Basking Rootwalla. Okay, so I didn't get punished for my little micro mistake, which is nice. Alright, opponent basically needs to play Thought Lash this turn. Okay. Okay, I mean, there it is. That buys time. They will have to have Thassa's Oracle or equivalent in their last couple cards. I am going to go ahead and fin a land out of the deck. Uh, I should never need black. Black, so on the off chance that some sort of back-to-basics card exists, I'm going to go ahead and grab a basic mountain here. Okay, uh, do I want to cycle Hollow One and turn it into a different card? What is the speed of Flaring Pain? Instant? Instant. I guess this just gives me one more look at a Flaring Pain. Three, seven, eight, nine. I'm already presenting like theoretical lethal damage. Yeah, I'll I'll cycle it. Bowmat Courier. If I play Bowmat Courier, I can no longer play a flaring pain if I draw it off Anji's Ravager. Accordingly, I will not play Bowmat Courier. Despite the fact that it can give me a few more looks at Flaring Pain in the future. Alright, send them. Okay, that is that is not flaring pain. All right, go ahead and always seal to thought lash. So my opponent activated thought lash once. So this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten damage. Uh, they're still facing lethal damage. Okay, there's a second activation. They're no longer facing lethal damage. They're just wanting to go to one here. Yeah, I'll let you go to one. Okay. Oh, I am just getting back priority after each one of these, despite the fact that I've auto-yielded to that. Sure. Okay, so my opponent ended up exiling more cards than was necessary in order to, uh... I, I don't know. Seems like Thought Lash is the sort of thing you activate as few times as you can. Alright. How much do you cost right now? Okay, you still cost one. Cast you using Taiga then. And I guess a Bomat. Well, Future Dim could be. Bomat Courier has haste. I can just play that next turn. All right, we'll see if my opponent has a win condition in hand. Okay, um, they they have it. GGs. And we'll go ahead and concede to that and not make them click through that again. Okay, um, I'm going to be keeping this hand. Um, the dream here is going to be finding a once upon a, or sorry, a, uh, maybe an Anji's Ravager with once upon a time. Oh, so we're probably playing against a post deck. Oh, maybe, maybe a, a four color loam ish build. Okay. Well, still a little bit of ambiguity because like there's some overlap between Mox Diamond and various versions of the deck, but we might actually be facing like a green black depths deck. All right. We're gonna we're gonna wanna go fast here. Oh, hey, we can just like straight up find the Andy's Ravager on the draw step. That's that's pretty dope. Dungevine now would be cool. 
How do I feel about Bomat Courier versus Blazing Rootwalla? Okay, so the question I, I have to ask myself is, do I want to play Putrid Imp or do I want to play Faithless Looting? I think I want to play Faithless Looting and try to find a Venge Vine. It's a little greedy, but I think that's what I want to do. And so accordingly, I'll take Blazing Rootwalla. I think this will be a bad lands. I want to leave the mountains in the deck for Ghost Quarter Recursion. So let's loot. Oh yeah, all right, found the Venge Vine. Uh, it doesn't matter what else I discard. Um, make it a root walla. Fast. LED. And this is where things get absolutely disgusting. Triple red. Fast Anji's Ravager, which will return Venge Mine. Yes. And now I'll cast a second blazing root walla. Uh, note, I have discarded Anger, so all this stuff has haste. We'll pump a lizard. Casual 11 damage on turn one. Don't forget the other three cards. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, opponent goes to nine. I will cast a hollow one for free. And next turn I will probably return a Venge Vine if my opponent is not dead. Right, now, Ghost Quarter plus Tabernacle is the thing that beats me here. Okay, alright. Uh, so my opponent is actually on lands. Yeah, um, good Good turn one, good turn one. Alright, uh, so I want Flaring Pain. And I can consider some other stuff. Like, this, this stuff is reasonable. Ancient Grudge isn't crazy to go after artifact mana and occasional other hate cards that see play like Spheres. I want to keep Gambles for Flaring Pain. I think that's important. I want to keep my haste things. Haste, like I lose a bunch of creatures to Tabernacle. Fizzing Needle's not bad for stopping, like, Wasteland or Ghost Quarter Recursion and things like Maze of Ith. I'm not sure if I actually want to try to attack their graveyard. Lands is way less graveyard-focused than they used to be because of Valakut Exploration. So I think I'm just going to sideboard three cards. I think I want to come out of the gates fast. So I think I'm going to go down two Ox and one Once Upon a Time here. It's also possible that I should rim a Bomat Courier because of Punishing Fire. I actually, yeah, I think I, I think I might split those. Let's try this. This just this gives me a little bit better end game, which I don't hate. Well, uh, this has no mana. We'll send that back. Yeah, uh, we we can keep this one. I suppose if I'm kind of like going all in on turn one, I can throw back my second land. I'll throw back the mountain. And I get to keep a second LED around to use with Anji's Ravager later. I believe I will be getting Taiga with my land. And notably, I don't have answers to Merit Lodge, right? So my answer to Merit Lodge is just kill them. Which is a reasonable strategy, although not a traditional one. Okay. Alright, so, so much for the Venge Vine. That's okay. Like the hand, the hand is still plenty functional, or maybe even good, even if the Venge Vine gets stopped. Alright, so we'll grab Taiga, LED, LED, and we'll crack one LED, and we'll grab an Anji's Ravager, followed by two Lizards. For one... Yeah, we're gonna return the Venge Vine. Hey buddy, why didn't you get out of that graveyard? I wanted to tag you in. Uh, no anger this time, so they're they're not crashing in. But I, assuming I pump basking a root walla, you know, I still put seven power into play. That gets to start attacking on turn two. It's pretty darn good. Now my opponent can just like go, you know, dark depths, some other land, kill me, and if that happens, that happens. Otherwise, I'm in a pretty good position. Okay. Alright, uh, that's not the mana to produce it this turn. Although I'm not sure that I can goldfish them quickly enough. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm gonna use one of these LEDs to pump a basking root wall, I think. Just take this damage. Then I'll send these in and see where my draw three takes me. Get them. Okay. I, I need, like, one more point of damage. 
Well, I guess that's not true because the this will be a blocker next turn. I think I need to cast the Faithless Looting. I don't think I get to pump a second time here. I, I need I need more. If I, if I pump both turns, it's 18 total damage. Yes. Shit, I'm gonna run into I'm gonna run into threshold issues with putrid imp blocking to buy me a turd versus merit lodge. Shit. Hmm. Six cards in graveyard right now, and the Anji's Ravager is forced to attack, so that means I'm going to be forced to discard this Bowmat Courier next turn. Ah. Uh, what do you have? Oh no! It's crop rotation for Yavamaya, and then my opponent gets it. Uh, they're Merit Lodge right now. Yup. Yeah, I, I didn't need too much more this game. Um, but they have a, they have a turn three goldfish, uh, which is pretty darn good. That is a that is a concession from me. All right, now that I know that they have Grafter's Cage, do I want Ancient Grudge? I don't think I do when I'm on the play. I think I just want like Flaring Pain as an out to like some of their lock pieces. Uh, on the play, I want the Once Upon a Time and this out. And honestly, let's go make this adjustment as well. A lot of times I'm not convinced that there's, like, right and wrong way to sideboard with Madness. Like, not, not a clear-cut one. I, I think there's a lot of, like, wiggle room with, like, play draw and how your opponent plays and specific cards that they have. You're not sideboarding much, but, like, there are things that have impacts. Uh, this is nothing. This is probably acceptable. I'm just I'm just confirming. So like I pitch a putrid imp and I go discard one, two, three, and then I'll be attacking for eight on turn two. That's that's fine. Oh yeah, you know, what woe is me thinking about whether or not attacking for eight on turn two is enough. Alright, opponent kept on seven. Go Badlands Imp. Discard number one. Get the lizard. He can always yield to you. Discard number two. Discard number three. Three hollow one. Will this be good enough? This is this is the the way of the aggro deck. I have done my thing. We'll see if it works. All right. I don't like this pause. This pause means they have options. Like they can they can wasteland me, and that's pretty good. Yeah. The. This is them getting a tapped land out of the way, which might mean that they have a fast kill. Um, I would, I would rather just pump than play Faithless Looting. This is this is a straight up race. Send them. So my opponent drops to twelve, and we'll see if they just have a natural turn two merit lodge. Eh. Well, I mean, can't really be mad, right? Where. We're probably not beating that. I can block with Putrid Imp, so I am, I am not dead. If I only get one attack, playing Bomat Courier isn't good enough to get a kill. So I think I have to play Faithless Looting here and maybe try to set up something that's more impressive. Because I, I don't get to attack in this turn. Let's loot. LED. Alright, let's junk Bomat Courier and looting. I think I'll keep LED in hand. And, and pass the turn. If I had played this turn very quickly, it's possible I could have attacked in with my creatures and my opponent would have played around a removal, sorcery speed removal spell on Merit Lodge. But I did not play this turn quickly. The most terrifying thing for me here would actually be if my opponent like doesn't go for the combo and they just start like messing with my creatures instead. Because if my opponent... like from turn two is comfortable settling in for the long game when they can combo me, that is that is probably a sign that I'm going to lose. Um, I can lose this turn to like a Punishing Fire, um, destroying my Putrid Imp or something. I need, I need theoretically five more damage, assuming my Putrid Imp uh, not blocks this turn. My opponent's thinking about not doing it. Okay, here it is. Oh no, I had F6'd. So I can't block. Oops. Okay, well. GG's.
I don't think we are getting there anyway. Yeah, we are not getting there anyway. Oops. Okay, I'm going to be keeping this hand, but this hand's not quite perfect. Um, there can be some potential issues with it, but between Once Upon a Time and Faithless Looting, I think we can sort them out. Oh no. More combo. I mean, we do have a pretty good off to the races hand. I will produce four creatures on turn one a good portion of the time. Rubland? Oh. <laughs> well. I guess we're playing against Unmarked Grave Reanimator? This is a card that... Uh, oh. Looking for the unburial rights directly. Okay. So a black land would probably be my ideal here. Then I just produce multiple hollow ones on turn one. Okay. Whiff. So I think I pick up Vengevine and just play Faithless. Uh, God, this is awkward. This is incredibly awkward. I think I'm going to take the Vengevine. And I think I am going to play Faithless Looting specifically to look for a land. Okay. Did not hit a land. I'm going to discard the Vengevine and the Anger. Uh, but now we have, unfortunately, not discarded enough cards to cast these Hollow Ones. Gamble can probably bail me out of this spot, but if my opponent makes a Curzel Brand or something this turn, uh, life gets a little weird. My opponent could also just, like, straight up reanimate Anger or Vengevine from my graveyard. That's also something that could happen. Okay. I'm intrigued. This time you just get the creature? Alright, yeah. But I sure don't beat a Sarah's Emissary in game one, huh? Okay. Now. Now we're talking. 100% of the time, this is casting Future Dimp. Badlands, Future Dimp. Now, I think I go ahead and gamble for a Vengevine here. Alright, discarded a Basking Root Wallow, which is cool. Oh shit. I didn't want to click through that. I wanted to save this trigger on the stack and discard Vengevine in response. Yeah. Oh well. I mean, that, that is something that definitely matters. How many cards have I discarded already? You discard two more cards. Um, so I'll discard another Vengevine, which I am unfortunately not putting into play this turn. And Blazing Rootwalla. Cast. Cast a Hollow One. Cast a Hollow One. Swing in. My opponent is at four. The, it, sure would be a shame if I had something else that could have done four damage there. Uh, that's 100% on me. Yeah. Uh, so I believe I have no outs to that in game one. You and creatures, you control all. Yep. All right. Yep. I, I punted that game by clicking too quickly. I knew in my head what I wanted to do. Uh, we'll board in four fairies. Does Flaring Pain stop Thera's Emissary? Yes, I believe it does. That means I can't board out Gambles either. I assume Ox is a little slow. I want the Angers. Maybe go Bomat Couriers out here. Keep the Once Upon a Time 3 Explosive turn ones. Is there any one card that improves his hand enough that I keep this if I have it with Gamble? I don't think so. Like, this can stop my opponent from going off, but I don't actually get anywhere doing it. Whereas with this one, I can gamble for an LED and usually produce a very good hand. This is fine. I'll just throw back a land with this hand. Throw back a Taiga. Alright. So once upon a time, I've got options. Thanks. Assuming I still go for an LED baseline, I think I just grab a Vengevine here. Alright. Taiga. Gamble. LED. Did not discard the LED. Which is great. Um, so let's put the Andre's Ravager into play. Not bad. Excuse me. Not bad for a turn one. We have an Ancestral Machine in play. Now my opponent does have like reanimation stuff that can just like go after my Vengevine. Grubland. Oh no. 
Yikes. Archon of Cruelty. I don't remember the exact text of this card. I know it's bad for me. Oh, yeah. I just sacrifice this. Okay. I, th I think we're donezo with this league. A, uh, this is ETV or attacks, right? Yeah, I, I think we're I think we're done. I mean, G GG's. So we went 1-4 in this league, but deck felt very good. Um, like, I, I did a lot of extremely broken things. We lost to a lot of extremely broken things as well. Uh, like, I had some of the highest ceiling hands I've ever had with this deck in this league. Uh, like, the round we played against Ozymandias was three turns total between two games. Uh, so, like, that's that's very telling. Uh, ultimately, I don't know if I got a good feel for Bomac Courier in this league. We played against a lot of combo. Um, like, four of the five rounds we played against were combo decks, and, like, Bomac Courier, I think, is going to be a little bit better against, like, Tempo or Midrange, where the games are going to be a little bit slower, and I want to rebuild rather than I want to kill instantly. So I don't think I got a good read on Bomat Courier. Um, it was... A a little awkward because I had it alongside Anji's Ravagers a couple of times, which meant that I didn't just want to, like, take it out of play. But I think having a colorless one drop that, like, fits in with the themes of the deck is theoretically fine. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, again, unsure about Pithing Needle. I did want the Flaring Pain for a couple of the matchups. Like, maybe I want a second one of those and a second Ancient Grudge over that. But again, small sample size, I'm unsure. Uh, but I had a lot of fun playing this league, and I hope you had fun watching it. If you did, you know, please consider liking or subscribing to support my content. And if you really want to support the channel, check out the video description for my donation information and get one of your decks on the stream. Have a great rest of the day. See ya.